Uh, we're going to turn it over now to uh, our next guest, Mr. Albert Butler. Uh, Albert Butler is the Director of Community Outreach and Diversity for the Fittler Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Albert has had a fascinating career journey in public facing occupations up until this point. Uh, he served in a variety of roles in the radio business, including hosting some compelling talk programs. Uh, Albert has spent time as a columnist, as well as the communications director for a mayoral campaign in Philadelphia. He currently serves as the director of community outreach and diversity at Fittler Club, where he oversees efforts by the club to engage with the Philadelphia community in some unique ways, including his brainchild, the Fittler Fellows Program, uh, which we're excited to talk about today. Albert, thank you so very much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. You can hear awesome. me coming in just fine? Yep. Beautiful. Um, Albert, I I'm curious, um, you've had this like really interesting career arc and you you've served in varied roles uh, and the work that you're doing now in the uh, community outreach and diversity space, uh, I know is, is something that like is soul feeding and, and life affirming. Um, what made you want to get into the, the sort of diversity and inclusion and equity space? Honestly, it, it wasn't anything I, I planned at all. Um, just to go back in time a little bit, um, I had finished working on the mayoral campaign. Um, and when you lose a political campaign, the first thing you do is get into consulting. <laughs> so <laughs> I was doing that. Uh, so I was doing media and political consulting uh, for about a year and a half. And then I met the person who was uh, the, the founder of Fittler Club, David Goodstep. Um, he went to college with my next door neighbor. And my next door neighbor said, hey, this guy who I went to college with is a good guy. Um, I think you should meet him. He's trying to bring something to Philly that's really unique. And I think you two can help each other. And so I met with him, we hit it off. I saw his vision. I was like, this is awesome. Let me know if I can be helpful. Um, some informal meetings and some introductions turned into an opportunity for uh, consulting, um, for me to consult with Fittler Club around membership and e, um, event planning. So um, kind of did that, helped recruit some folks for Fittler Club. And in the process of doing that, I saw that um, in the vision that David Goodstead had was to have this modern kind of membership-based club that change the paradigm of what people typically think of these things, which is kind of stodgy places with like filled with cigar smoke and leather seats and like completely inaccessible to most of everyone on earth. <laughs> and we wanted it to be a, a different holistic experience. So knowing that that was the vision and knowing my roots in Philly, I felt like I, could, I was really well positioned to take the diversity piece of that vision and help it come to fruition uh, for the club as we uh, got closer to open and then actually physically open. So I created my own position. I had no experience specifically in diversity, um, but just the things I had done over my life, I'd had multiple interactions, conversations in those communities, obviously representing the community myself. So um, I think all those life experiences put me in a, in a position to do this. And what I found in researching the position I created for myself was that my position didn't exist really anywhere. There are not a lot of membership clubs um, across the globe. Um, it's starting to blow up now, but there's still not a lot when you compare it to other businesses. And so I was looking for what would be my counterpart's job description, and I didn't find one. So I found a couple people that were close, had some conversations with them. They were very helpful, and they helped me do it because there, there's a lot of diversity um, there's a huge diversity industry now. A lot of it is built around HR. I'd say 98% of it is built towards like, what's the employee experience? Right. Um, what are people feeling when they come to work? How do we get a better, more reflective work staff as it goes, as it's compared to outside society? My role is to, is more customer facing. So there aren't a lot of people in the diversity space that are dealing with the customer experience. What are our diverse customers experiencing? How can we make their experience better? How can we bring them in so there's more customers enjoying the experience? So I thought it was a really unique opportunity for me. 
And when I looked at it, even though it wasn't like I went to school for broadcast journalism, um, I, I spent most of my life in sports, politics, or, or media. So it was a complete departure for me. But that was another thing that was important was the idea that sometimes you have to stretch yourself, do something that's not comfortable, get out of a zone that you feel like you belong in and be open to new and different things. And this has been an amazing opportunity. And all I had to do was take a meeting. I'm interested, Albert, because you and I have, have a similar educational background and that we both went to school for broadcasting. Right. Um, how do you how do you leverage what you've learned as a broadcaster and from your, your undergraduate education into your your current role right now? That's a good question. It it's kind of twofold. There's kind of like a, a literal one, which is um, since particularly now, since we're in the situation that we're in and everything's on lockdown, all of our programming is moved virtually. So now I'm using the skills that I gained as a radio host and uh, broadcast journalism student, literally as hosting <laughs> Q and A's for Fitler Club um, on various subjects that our membership has asked for. So um, that's one application there. But I think one of the things that helps me is that when you do live, live radio, you have to think quickly. Um, there aren't a lot of scripts involved. Some people script maybe the beginning of their show and open or close. I never did that. So it was just um, being prepared and using your preparation uh, to be able to speak on a number of subjects at any given moment. I think having that flexibility, being able to uh, do things on the fly um, has helped me a lot in this job. Um, some of it is sales, so some of it plays into that. Some of it is just making people um, feel good. And so uh, having had that experience in radio and trying to lift spirits and things like that, um, I think there's a, there's a translation there as well. And to that end, one of the things I, I know about you, Albert, is that you're a master networker. And you, you, when, I, when I see outreach in your uh, job title, it, it makes a ton of sense to me because you're, you're somebody that forms relationship with others uh, pretty easily. Um, to that end, I'm curious, what was your thoughts behind uh, the development of this Fittler Fellows program? And can you, can you speak to sort of what it is and, and why it fits and how it fits with that vision of, of what Fittler Club is going to be or is? Yeah, um, it's, it's one of those things that came up um, when I joined the Fittler Club team, there were five of us. Um, before COVID happened, our staff had gotten up to 270 folks. So I joined early on. And um, I could see that there was a framework uh, to work from. Um, and I don't know, say that again. So what went into the development of the Fittler Fellows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the first things that happened, we had a conversation early on um, and they were just like, bring ideas that you think can fit within the framework of our program of being different, um, highlighting diversity and um, showing people that we're different than other clubs have been um, and kind of, you know, put our stake in the ground and saying, this is how it should be done. So that's what we did. And we had that homework assignment. And that's one of the things I came up with was a fellowship program. At, at least initially, it was a bunch of different fellowships, um, different categories, um, different criteria and kind of different focus for each one of the fellowship programs. Um, it got whittled down to one larger program that had different buckets because that was going to be an easier thing to manage. Um, but the big thing about the fellowship program that I got excited about was as a way to meet different people, um, connect them to the club. And one of the things I did when I was in radio is the, the folks who I encountered who I thought were particularly dynamic individuals, or I was touched by their story or, um, something else was going on that I really thought they should be highlighted for. I was able to pull them on and interview them and give them some light that way. This was similar in the sense that I, I'm eating dynamic people and I get to say, hey, would you like to be a part of this program? And I get to shine some light on you. And in exchange, we get to benefit from their expertise, uh, their genius and whatever their field is. And it's been awesome. Um, there's so many different kinds of people. And I think once people saw that class rolled out, they saw in concrete, tangible ways 
how we are different and how we're trying to change the paradigm of the private club and what that means, what it means for access, what it means for representation, what it means um, for opportunities moving forward. All those things are super important to us. And this was a way for us to show the world that we're serious. And it wasn't just like, oh yeah, yeah, we want to we want to do these things and um, we have the best intent in the world, but that's all well and good. But if there's no execution behind that, uh, then it's just fluff. And we didn't want we don't we don't want to fall into that trap. Albert, I'm going to get you out of here on one more question, if I could be so kind, uh, or be so bold, I should say, if you'd be so kind. Um, I would not be kind. <laughs> uh, Albert, I'm, you've got 17-year-old Albert Butler by the shoulders. Mm. What do you tell him? That's like an hour-long conversation in and of itself. There's so much. It. <laughs> There's so much, but you know, thanks to Twitter, I've thought about this a number of times over the years because that question pops up periodically on that on that platform. Um, I think when it, when it comes to professionally specifically, I think there are a number of things that you just have to kind of keep in mind. Albert, listen to me. Um, sometimes I, I played on teams, I coached. It's very important to be a great teammate. But at the same time, sometimes the best thing you can do is look out for yourself and think about your best interests. And I think a lot of times we go into situations and we, we suffer through things, um, bad, bad bosses, a bad job that we just know isn't right for us, whatever that thing is. And we think we have to stick it out. We think we have to do it because we made a commitment. Like sometimes the best thing you can do is move on from that. And don't be afraid to say, I can move on from this. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're lazy. It doesn't mean any of those things. It just means that this situation wasn't the best situation for me. Let me put myself in a better situation. Um, and that's okay to pursue that. The other thing is be totally open, totally open. When I was a 17 year old, I knew that I was gonna be an anchor on ESPN or something along those lines. I knew it, you couldn't tell me anything different. I didn't wanna hear anything differently, nothing. And so life happens and things happen. Um, I wanted to play football. I played a little bit of football, but I did a lot of radio um, and that radio turned into some TV and that TV turned into some opportunity to do some modeling. All these things happened and I took advantage of those things. Then all those things disappeared and I had to figure something else new. So sometimes you can go back and pursue some of those things. For me, I felt like that chapter had kind of closed and so it was on to some other thing. So I had to be open and and figure out ways, creative ways to use my skill sets in a way that didn't necessarily apply the way that they did before. And had I not been open to meeting my neighbor's friend, I wouldn't be in the position I was in now. Um, and having seen that happen in my own life, I know it's happened in many other people's lives, like the serendipity happened. You never thought you'd be in this place in a million years, but here you are. Um, and I'm really content. I didn't think I'd be here. If you had told me I'd be doing hospitality at um, a place like Fiddler Club when I was 17, I was like, what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. Um, I, I really couldn't be happier. And it's a great situation. Albert, how can people find out more about Fiddler Club? Uh, FiddlerClub.com is our site. Um, people can go there and check out some of the things that we, we've done prior to the shutdown, uh, some of the things that we're doing during the shutdown. What you see in the background here is our ballroom. Um, and we're currently part of my new duties um, because we are officially closed as of this point, um, is setting up a pantry for our employees, those who are still working and those who were laid off. Um, so every week um, we stock groceries and then the following week they come and pick them up. And we've been doing that since the shutdown. So, and we'll continue that um, for the next month at least. So um, that's, that's how my duties have, have shifted. Um, when you, you talk about outreach and uh, doing things in a unique way and changing the conception of what a private club is, that certainly fits with that vision uh, and, and applaud you for it a thousand percent. Um, thank you so much, Albert, for taking the time to be with us. Troy, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for, uh, for asking me to be a part of it. I'm, I got to do this stuff a lot when I was in radio. I haven't done it in a while, so I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And folks, we'll be right back with our next exciting guest on JA Inspire Virtual.